Wow. Uh, is it working? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Nice to see you again. Hello. Uh, my name is Ayara Tucano. I am from the Tucano Nation. We are a Brazilian indigenous nation. It's not only Brazilian. We live actually in the borders between Brazil, Colombia and Venezuela. So that's it, like right in the center of the Amazon, in the upper Black River. And um, in, I will show you later. And I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, our context, our fight, and what is happening today in Brazil. I'm going to speak, um, I'm going to try to speak, to do this presentation really shorter because I'm really interested in talking and having a good conversation. I am really curious about how are you dealing with this radical anthropology uh, and as well with Extinction Rebellion. Uh, um, I'm here with Jaider that is one of our greatest indigenous artists in Brazil mm -hmm. and we uh, came here looking for bridges, for windows and for doors to share a little bit about um, the indigenous cosmovisions, how do we relate to reality. And um, we, uh, we were received by Guillaume, that is one of our supporters here, and that works with um, connecting many um, uh, social movements together and we were talking about uh, civ civil disobedience. Yeah, that's how you say it in English. And I was uh, talking with, the, with him. OK, civil disobedience for indigenous peoples, you know. <laughs> 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 we, we were al already born outsiders. We were already born uh, rebels. Uh, it's like a sentence. We are indigenous. We, we, are, we are not recognized by any nation, and we are not, not recognized by history. So, <laughs> so what about epistemological disobedience? <laughs> Is it possible to think otherwise that than the Greeks or, you know? <laughs> so it's, it has been a, a really um, interesting opportunity coming uh, to Europe and meeting lots of movements and peoples that are interested and that are doing it, even if they don't have the consciousness that they are doing it all the time. But it's happening, and that's really important for us at this moment. So let's begin. OK, you know who are the, that indigenous peoples are not a race, right? Because in Brazil, they are not sure of that. <laughs> In Brazil, they think in, to be indigenous is like to have a blood, uh, blood, blood drop, oh, yeah. like in the like in the United States as well. Yeah. It's like a like a race thing, yeah. but no, indigenous nations we are ancient civilizations that still resist until today, and we are everywhere in the world. So uh, we are uh, all colors as well, and you can go in further. And um, and the history, as you know, well. It tells uh, in a very um, sophisticated way about genocide. They even, they even call it genocide. They, they even call it invasion. They say it is a discovery. It was a discovery. Someone was lost. They were looking for the Indians. <laughs> and they still call us Indians today. And I don't know if there is somebody from India here in this room. Hello, <laughs> but you know, we are really far away <laughs> and they were lost <laughs> and we find them on the beaches. <laughs> there, is, there, there, there is a poet, a Brazilian poet that says uh, it was a really rainy day when the Portuguese arrived because it was r rainy and cold. So they saw the indigenous uh, naked and they dressed up. Uh, they dressed us. But if it was a, ra a sunny day, we, we would undress the Portuguese. <laughs> and there were kind of two uh, discoveries of Brazil. Uh, the first one, and that, that was Ailton Cranach says, and he, he, Ailton Cranach is one of the most important indigenous thinkers in Brazil today. He's a philosopher, he's an historian. He says that there were two discoveries of Brazil. The first one 
was that time when Portuguese arrived and they thought they had discovered something and they created Brazil over our heads. And the second moment was when indigenous nations, after having uh, like some centuries of, um, dizziness, we realized that Brazil was already there and that it, has, it had no place for us. That those nations that were created upon our territories had no place for indigenous nations. So we had to resist. And our better way to resist is just exist as we are. So for uh, the Brazilian indigenous nations, the, here are some data. Uh, we are, uh, you can read it, <laughs> I'm not good with numbers in English. <laughs> uh, but we are less than a million uh, people that are recognized as indigenous, but we are more than 300 nations and we speak almost 300 living languages, indigenous languages, and worldwide we are more than 5,000 uh, nations, that is 5% of the world population. Okay, and if you go to the next, here is a map of Brazil, is, a, is an estimative, yeah. uh, estimative? Uh, uh, of um, Brazil before uh, colonization. Uh, these are the, the linguistic branches. So for my territory, I am Tucano, and my grandfather lives here. <laughs> Uh, and of course, it was all occupied. And if you go, well, today, this is indigenous lands in Brazil. These are the indigenous territories that were recognized. Um, it took a little time. The first one that was recognized was the uh, in, uh, Xingu Indigenous Park, Parque Indigena do Xingu. For the anthropologists, you may know this a little bit of this story. Uh, about uh, the, um, the Villas Boas brothers that make this, this uh, first one. And after, um, after the constitutional movement in 88, we managed to, to build a whole chapter on indigenous rights. And we began the recognition of the other uh, territories. So my territory is there. We call it the head of the dog. <laughs> and uh, well, you so indigenous territories nowadays in Brazil represent 13% uh, of the whole uh, national territory, and we are recognized as less than a million. So the actual president says there is too many land for too few people, and that land is unproductive, and it should be explored. They doesn't, they doesn't care if those lands are actually the lands that are protecting the, what is left of the Amazon forest and what is left of bi biodiversity. Because if you go and see where are the indigenous territories all over the world, we uh, have in our territories 82% of the whole globe biodiversity. Okay, so indigenous territories protect life. And not only life, they protect different cultures. Cultural diversity is really important to, to keep this life growing on. Um, so, but if you go and see where is the indigenous population in Brazil, it's quite a bit different. Go back. These are the territories that are recognized and go further. This is the indigenous population. Let's see it again. The territories and the population. So we still are everywhere. We are in the cities, we are uh, the countries, we are in the middle of the forest. Yes, there are many, uh, a few indigenous nations that are um, on volunteer in isolation. Yeah, voluntarily isolation. Uh, 60, 60 uh, indigenous nations that are isolated until today, uh, but um, the, the greatest population, the biggest one is the Ticuna nation in the Amazon, and the second biggest are the Guarani Kaiowa. I don't know if you have heard of 
the Guarani Kiowa situation. The Guarani Kiowa, they live like here in the Mato Grosso do Sul state and they face a real uh, violence uh, situation um, uh, caused by agribusiness. They, they, we call it the indigenous Gaza line. Mm. It's really it's really violent. And the third biggest indigenous uh, nation is down south Brazil, in Rio Grande do Sul state, uh, is the Kaingang nation. Now you go back, you go back, you saw the Guarani Kaiowa nation don't have any land as it is recognized. The Kaingang nation neither. Neither are the other Guaranis in Sao Paulo, Minas Gerais, neither are the Tupi. Uh, different indigenous nations in the northeast, but they are there. Go further. They are there, and you uh, go further again. Violence is everywhere. This is the map of uh, a, a violence observatory uh, of the one human rights institution in Brazil. Uh, because you know we we have lost our Ministry of Human Rights. Uh, this year, so it was <laughs> official, um, but the president, um, like he, he, he wanted to eradicate the the whole institutional um, sides that were supposed to defend or to to to, to talk about human rights, and uh, this is a map of uh, murders of indigenous leaders in the last ten years. It is only indigenous leaders, okay? So you go uh, back, here is the indigenous population, you go back, here are the indigenous territories, and you show me again the violence against indigenous nations. This violence is uh, most of the time caused because of um, land issues, agribusiness, the advance of the agribusiness borders, they are uh, entering the indigenous territories, uh, mining issues. They want to explore uh, the gold uh, and other uh, substances in the floor because uh, in Brazil, the indigenous territories do not belong to indigenous nations. They are not private property. They are uh, the property of the nation. That means that these uh, territories, uh, you can go back to the indigenous territories, these territories are for the use of indigenous nation. Como que fala uso? Como que Exclusive Yeah. <laughs> the exclusive usufruit of indigenous nation while we're still living as indigenous. And underneath, it belongs to the state. So the gold, uh, the diamonds, everything can be explored by the state, and they always uh, they always face um, this kind of trouble uh, with indigenous with with indigenous and human and environmental environmental environmental. I I can't say that word; it's too complicated for me. Uh, nature rights, <laughs> okay, um, because we don't allow them. So if you can go to the violence, they kill us. And they kill us in many ways, and those ways are not even new. Because, uh, uh, you know, when, when, when I say here is like Gaza, we, we are facing for 500 years a biological war, a chemical war, a violent physical war. Uh, these are people that are dying by poisoning and malnu mal malnutrition, how do you say it? Malnutrition, malnutrition and uh, all kind of uh, aggressions uh, for the traffic and everything. You can go further, please. Uh, so, well, this is really basic because it uh, is w what can we learn? I was thinking about um, changing this because um, each day that I go further, I, I believe, what can we learn? I, I, I don't know what we have really to share as indigenous. That is just only um, what we have learned is that that system of cons consumation, that economical system, that political system, and the laws doesn't work. They still don't work for us. 
That is the only thing we have to share, actually. Okay? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Your system doesn't work for us. For us. <laughs> and uh, you can go back. Yeah? Uh, this uh, poll about the, the um, history issue, uh, here is in Portuguese, but I believe you can recognize it. This I, I, oh, okay. I just finished a master's on human rights at the University of Brasilia. And um, if you read Portuguese, I can share it with you. Um, because it's really, it's, not a, it's, it's on human rights, it's not anthropology. But it was really radical for, for the human rights. And well, this is a comparis, compa comparison. Comparison um, about history. In the United States, these are some wars that mark the annihilation of the most of the indigenous population. They are mostly uh, from the 19th century, is the march to the West. And in Brazil, that is not taught at the universities, that is not taught at school, that is not taught anywhere. These are some cases of wars that also killed the indigenous population, beginning in the uh, 1500s, but until today, until today. And this is really interesting for historians. If you know someone that is interested in, in doing this research, please tell me. Uh, because it's really, really complicated. And actually, you have the documents. You don't have the numbers because nobody cares how many indigenous died. But you still have the names of the places, and every name of the places in Brazil is indigenous. Um, so you can go further. Uh, that, that chart was to say that the indigenous resistance was all the time. We resisted since 1500, all the time, in an, organ, uh, in an organized way of resistance. Uh, working together, joining peoples to, 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 to resist together against invasion. Invasion. And we still do it today. Uh, but, of course, as a social movement, as a national movement, we began uh, working together during the 80s. It was like the end of the um, dictatorship times. And we work, uh, actually not we, my father's generation, uh, went for uh, building uh, a little space in the, co in the um, Constitution and other laws, international laws, declarations for indigenous nations. Como é que fala OIT? Ah, you know, okay. <laughs> international laws and to do this game on how to protect indigenous and all the, everything that is related to indigenous. So, uh, we are still in this fight, and you can go further. And uh, we are using uh, the, every kind of technology we can uh, to say it and repeat it and repeat it over and, around and over that where you have indigenous nations, you have forests, you have life, you have biodiversity, you have cultural diversity, and we need to protect it. Okay. We, we you know, indigenous peoples inhabit 60% of the planet reserves areas. That is, uh, um, oh, je, je <laughs> <laughs> that is really important for all of us. Climate change is real. We need to protect what is left. We need to work together on reforestation, okay? But we cannot lose what we have. Okay, go further, please. So, and what is, why is it protected? Why is there life in indigenous territories? Because of how we think, it's because of how, how we relate to the world. It's because of our, of our cultures, of our, our spiritualities. We still sing and pray and, and salute and ask permission to nature and to the forest. We still work really, really hard 
to respect the, the nature cycles. Of course, it's not the reality for every one of us because many of us has, have lost their, their forest, okay? We, we have all kinds of... Um, uh, of, uh, of ah! <laughs> Wait a minute, sorry. Uh, Não, mas eu não estou pensando nem em português direito, calma aí. I, uh, uh, well, we, are, we are in the cities, we are everywhere, okay? But, um, and, and that is some, something, it's really a long discussion about how, how we used to be in indigenous in the city and how we used to be in indigenous in the forest. And that is very discussed and very used against us. But what we really want is to have all that, that land back <laughs> and preserved land. Share this land in, an, in other ways, okay? And we have science. We, ha we are complex civilizations and that is not often understood because we live in this culture that is esteemed by colonization. And what, when I say colonization, it's all about power and private propriety and profit. It's P, 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 P. Pa power, propriety, and profit. It's selfishness. It doesn't share anything with anyone. The energy doesn't circulate. It blocks the, the cycle of everything. It's not only the nature cycle, it's the social cycle that we are supposed to build together as humans with nature and as a part of nature. So that, that's why it's really important to respect and protect what is left of this spirituality and also open the space to this spirituality to flow and maybe connect and think about epistemological disobedience together. That's a funny word. I took two years to, to learn how to say epistemology. <laughs> but, and it's a Greek word, but it's fun to use it. <laughs> okay. So, as for example, you, you can... Uh, as for example, for us in Brazil, we say somos todos parentes. We are all related. Because family for us is not only like our father and our mother and sisters and brothers. Family is the whole community. When we meet somebody that is from another indigenous nation, we salute him and we say, hey, cousin, how are you doing? Because we know we are facing the same, the same struggle. Because we know we share so many uh, similar views. So we are all related. And that's why we share, and we live together, and we won't, won't let somebody of our family go hungry or sick alone. That is really essential for our, for our nations. So when we say we are fighting for our family and we love our, our family, our family is not only humankind. We are the sons of the rivers. And the, and the mountains and the forest, we are related to nature. Mm. That's the kind of epistemological disobedience I am invited, <laughs> <laughs> inviting you to do. <laughs> you can go further. So what are the challenges we are facing today? I don't know if you have seen this man before. This is the chief Haoni from the Kayapo people. He is really important in our political story. He is one of our greatest chiefs. Today he is like 89 years old and he is still fighting. This photo was during the World Cup that happened in Brazil and it, we had many um, uh, protests and it was like the beginning, the announcement of a uh, coup d'etat. I don't know how do you say it in English? Coup d'etat. Coup d'etat? Ah, bah. Bah, tu sais, hein, les Français, ça prend de temps en temps. Au coup d'état, that is working uh, today. Um, but this, uh, the, the challenges indigenous nations face all over the world are, are really similar. 
Okay? It's the same situation, uh, for example, uh, in Canada, United States, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, in Africa, uh, in Asia as well, and even in Europe, those who are, that have left, the Sami people, also face uh, territorial uh, issues and, and, and cultural issues with this whole system. So it's important to support indigenous people all over the world. Uh, in the case of Brazil, for my human rights research, I made it's all in Portuguese, sorry. But uh, we can talk about violences. We have um, um, some relatories, uh, reports, human rights reports that are really important that are from the CIMI, the Conselho Indigenista Missionário. There's an indigenous council, missionary, missionary council. indigenous con, con, council. Uh, that is like, a, it's not an, an ONG, but it's part of the Catholic Church, and they were really, really strategic all the time. And, and they work on human rights reports. And they, uh, they are one of my um, references, and they talk about the violence against the material uh, patrimony and the indigenous territories. Okay, what kind of violence? This is a photo of a Krenak, a Krenak uh, person at the borders of the Rio Doce, the Sweet River, that was killed three years ago when we have the, the break of a dam that uh, polluted the whole river until the sea and killed the whole ecosystem and it was their grandfather. The Krenak are grandchildren of the Watu, that is the Sweet River, and it was a beautiful river. That is one kind of example, but we have uh, fires, vandalism, um, hobu, the thieves, uh, um, um, deforestation, illegal hunt, illegal fishing. Como fala garimpo? Illegal mining, okay. Uh, wood traffic, animal traffic, the invasion of the territory by, by drug traffic, um, pollution of the waters, uh, esgotamento. Cadê a minha tradutora? Uh, the storage of, uh, of hydric resources. Yeah, yeah, water resources and everything, and you go to the next. And you have the violence against, that is not on the CIMIS, okay? That is mine, because that no one considers, even in the human rights reports, and even in the anthropology, in anthropological reports, <laughs> uh, it's really, <laughs> it's really uh, rare to consider uh, the violence against immaterial patrimony and, and the indigenous cultures. You know, I'm talking about violence against immaterial patrimony because it, it is supposed to be defended in national and international treaties. But you have no observatory for that. You have no references. You have no, no, no measure uh, to, 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 to understand what is happening and what is happening. It's the negation of the indigenous identity, it's cultural appropriation, is the, the appropriation of uh, intellectual property, uh, is the um, non authorized use of the images, of the names, of the uh, knowledge of indigenous nation, is the uh, desvalorization, the the value of indigenous culture, of indigenous history, the invisibilization and stereotypation of indigenous in the whole world education is not only in the Brazilian education because in, at school, for those that are, that are teachers at school, we still teach children about the discovery of the Americas. <laughs> they still do it. And it's still on TV and movies and books, and it's like folklorical. It's, but the folklore is not indigenous. The folklore is colonialism. Okay? Uh, you can go further. And then you have the violence against the physical, the, the individuals. What are indigenous peoples, indigenous persons facing? Well, murder, homicide, death threats, uh, sequestration. 
kidnapping, torture, power abuse, racism, rape, uh, obstetric violence, uh, forced sterilization without uh, uh, acknowledge, um, slave work, uh, people traffic, extortion, intimidation, um, verbal aggression, all kinds of crimes. Because we live in a we live in a, a very racist culture against those that were supposed to be colonized, and we are still that. We are still not. You can go into the next one, and then finally, <laughs> finally is the last one. Uh, you have the violence against indigenous peoples uh, caused by the omission of the of the state. Is it right? Is Okay, we are Brazilians, we have nationalities. Uh, you, you know, at the beginning, uh, the crowns and the empires uh, used to recognize indigenous nations as nations, even in the paper. Today in Brazil, it's, it's, it's considerable. No, 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 it's, it's, it's like... It's not yeah. Inconceivable. It's inconceivable mm. for the government to, to talk about indigenous mm. peoples as nations mm. because they say, oh, they are, they are against Brazil's nation. Mm. They treat us as terrorists. It's true. Mm. And it, it was not just this government right now. The others before us, well, there, there is not much difference for us. Today is maybe a little big, um, a little bit um, more official. Mm? Official, but violence and uh, racism w was all the time there. And uh, you, you are able to see the omission of the state when we have uh, plenty of laws. And Brazil has the most perfect constitution about indigenous rights in the world. Okay, they, they tell it all the time at the UN. They say, no, we have so many rights, we are perfect, and they are like uh, very proud of it, but they, they never uh, respect the, uh, their own laws. And they want to change them. And they, now they want to, to rip them, because they, we, we build those laws, and they, they are supposed to respect, but they don't respect it, them when they um, uh, don't do nothing about suicide, alcoholism, uh, drug traffic, um, the sexual violence and the sexual diseases that are really in. Como que fala quando está assim contaminado muito? Yeah, it is is it's really spreading. Uh, they don't do nothing about uh, drinkable water or, or safety or uh, the educational the educational system. Uh, they they all, they never have neither the money neither the human resources to apply the law. That is a mission, and that's a crime. Okay, uh, so. Please support indigenous nations. <laughs> okay, I love this photo because, okay, it's more focused on the police here. But here in the front, there are two friends of mine. This one is the Huni Queen chief, Huninawa, and he's holding uh, the Kaingang chief from the south of Brazil. The, these are the two chiefs, two indigenous chiefs that are from nations that are completely different, that live in very, re re really different situations. And they are close, close friends. So, what I have learned with indigenous movement is that it, it is possible to ally and to work within cultural diversity. We are the proof of that. We are the proof. We are, in Brazil, we are more than 300 different civilizations, and we can work together. Why can't we work together with the European civilization as well? And the others. And the others. It is possible. It is humanly possible. Uh, so uh, how about valuing indigenous cultures and get, get rid of those stereotypes that we, <laughs> is it you now? <laughs> uh, get rid of those stereotypes. You know, I, I used to be a teacher 
an art teacher on, uh, in public school in Brazil. And every time I, I, I arrived in a new school, my pupils were like, woo, 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 to me. Because they have learned in, on TV and, and, and these uh, this things that Indians do that. And they used, they used to ask me, hey, we call our teachers is like auntie. Hey, auntie, uh, are you from India? And then I know, I'm not. <laughs> but I am indigenous. I am indigenous. Do you know what about indigenous peoples? It's important to recognize that we are really, really diverse. And uh, another thing is please value our economy. We live because there are hundreds, millions of, <laughs> millions, yeah, millions of indigenous women that are working really, really hard with very little stuff like this kind of. I, I brought my, my drawings, for example. It's all for selling. <laughs> but uh, that's how we support the most part of our families, is the women working together. And, and please uh, go and listen to uh, indigenous music. Know a little more about what is contemporary in indigenous, between indigenous nations. I am uh, the coordinator of an indigenous radio. It is the first web indigenous radio in Brazil that is called Radio Yande. Yande Radio is on www.radioyande.com uh, with a Y. Okay, and then you can listen to a lot of indigenous music, traditional music from the elders and contemporary music, indigenous rap, indigenous everything, and also indigenous news. We are a news portal, and so that is another invitation. And another thing that is really important, and I, we have worked a lot with Jider uh, during this tour, is know a little more about <coughs> indigenous contemporary art. Because, you know, uh, what is interesting about this, uh, this weird history on um, epistemological disobedience is that I took two years to learn how to say epistemology and paradigm. <laughs> These are weird Greek words. And I had a degree, an art degree. I wasn't a lawyer and I was doing human rights. So I need to learn a lot of Greek and Latin words. <laughs> But if we are really willing to change the paradigm, if you are really wi willing to connect to other cultures, maybe we can silence ourselves a little bit and get a little bit rid of those words to reconsider them. We can connect through other languages. We can connect through visual language. This is Jaiders. He is our indigenous Picasso in Brazil right, long, right now. And this is mine. We can connect to a language that doesn't use those paradigmas, those definitions, those Greek, European, white, male, classist, racist, homophobic, misogynist kind of thinking. We want to change that paradigm. We have enough of uh, oppression. We are all oppressed by that. It's not only indigenous. The women, the men, the children, the elders, Nature is oppressed by that kind of thinking. And maybe we can silence ourselves. And as Jaider was saying the other day, reconsider some words. What is richness to you? What is justice for you? What is power for you? If we can really reconsider it, then we will be doing this epistemological disobedience. 
adapting, assuming another posture to the world. That's why indigenous nations are spreading and walking the whole globe to share other visions. And we are sharing it on internet and everywhere. Okay, so you can go and look in YouTube for indigenous YouTubers from the whole globe. Here are Brazil, is a Brazilian one that I, is my friend. He's really, really smart. Uh, and you can go and look for the APIP, that is the Articulation of Indigenous Peoples in Brazil. The, it is our major represent, uh, representative institution for the indigenous movement. Uh, here is my radio. Uh, but you have also other um, sites for communication as Media India, Visibilidade Indigena, and indigenous films that you can reach as well. Uh, go and, and take a little time uh, to, to, to listen to these people, and not only Brazilian people. There are a lot of Canadian indigenous YouTubers, uh, North American indigenous YouTubers, uh, from Australia, New Zealand, from everywhere, from Africa as well. They are very, very, very organized, and we are really, really diverse, but even like that, we are facing the same challenges and we agreed in lots of things. Uh, tomorrow is a really important day. Tomorrow, we are gathering in Brasilia, that is Brazil's capital, more than 4,000 indigenous leaders from the whole territory, from the whole country, to gather ourselves and go speak to the institutions of the state, to the National Congress, the Supreme Court, to the President, to the ministries, about how it's really important and they have to respect indigenous rights, they have to respect indigenous territories, and we won't allow them to exploit our territories, and we won't allow them to reap everything that we have built together in democracy. So tomorrow is a real special moment. And I've come, I've came here, we have come here to share about this reality. This is called the Free Land Camp. Okay, Acampamento Terra Livre, Free Land Camp. Uh, it be, it's be between the 24th and 26th April in Brasilia. And last, last week, uh, the, the president already saw, uh, said that uh, the militaries will be waiting for us. So, uh, if you go to the Facebook of Radio Yande, you will find some videos that, uh, that we made together. And um, there is this video in English, but it's all also in Spanish and French and Portuguese. And I'd love if you can share it, because at this moment, at this particular moment, these two, these three days and further, we need to give visibility to indigenous movements in Brazil. The laws that are protecting indigenous territories and what is left in, uh, uh, in, in the Amazonian biodiversity, the waters, the forest, depend on the fight on indigenous peoples because the, there is nobody else that is fighting with their bodies, with our blood for that. So that's why we say indigenous blood in the veins and in the veins the fight for the land. The land is our mother, and we must protect it. OK, so thank you. <laughs> and um, I will I forgot. I forgot. This is, uh, I was there that day. It was last year, Freeland Camp. And this is a shaman from the, um, oh my god, Munduruku nation. Our elders say that the, the most powerful weapon we have is our spirituality. So you have hundreds of elderly 
that go like that and face that kind of guys. Just with this. This means a lot for us. I would like very much to, to share this uh, kind of a prayer. I know in Europe you have many, many, many situations with this kind of uh, religion. But spirituality for us is not religion at, at all. <laughs> spirituality is how we relate to the world. So it's not about being a, a religious institution. I'd like to thank you very much and thank the Great Spirit for this opportunity for all this way to Europe and uh, this is one of the last spots is England and then I am going back tomorrow I won't be at the Freeland camp and that is really hurting me because I know my brothers and my sisters will be facing the police and is uh, I have always been there it's the first time I'm not there Oh, well, in the, the last five years I've been there, every, every day. And it's so beautiful to see them together, walking and marching. And I'm really used to have these um, pepper sprays and bombs in the face. I'm really used to that. But I, I made this choice to try to talk to different people and reach for support. This camp also needs really fuel, very little structure to, to, to receive these 4,000 uh, leaders. They need like to buy chicken and rice and to make tents with plastic. They don't have any, even the money for that. So we are, we are, we are also doing the, the campaign for funding the, the resources to do this, this freeland camp. It happens every year. <laughs> I'd like to do these thanks in the way my father lent me to you. And uh, invite you to, I don't know if I, I believe I took too much too longer. Mm -hmm. Is it OK? Because you know, we are not English, we are Brazilians and indigenous time, there is no time for us. <laughs> There's no time. And I'll explain you why. Because at the beginning, when there was no time, when time wasn't born, it came into the nothing, like the first thought. This was like a blue. Like a, like a wind, and the first light. And that's what we call Umakuikun, the great grandfather of the universe. The first thought. And his first thought was creation. So he turned into Umakuikun, the great grandmother of the universe. For us, the great spirit is masculine and feminine. And this represents the whole universe. The maraca, ah, I forgot how do you, you say it in English? No, the calabasa, no, no. The goat. The goat represents the womb of the mother. It is the sacred wood of, of the waters that is full of seeds. And every one of us was born into the sacred womb, the world of the waters of their mother. Right? Yeah? yeah? And the stick is the axis of the word. Is the support of the great father that is um, bringing fer uh, fertility into the womb of the mother. So this sound for us is the sound of the forest and if you close your eyes, if you close your eyes, this is the first sound every one of us was able to hear when we were 
into our mother's womb. Thank you so much. Anion. <laughs> 